Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. This is the next tutorial in the Coding Geometry Dash in Java series. So today what we're going to do is add proper Z indexing to our render. In the last tutorial, we got to a point where we have our backgrounds being drawn, but there is a slight problem where these things down here are not drawing correctly. And so what we're going to do today is fix that problem by adding real Z indexing to our render. Now, if you don't know what Z indexing is, I'm going to go over that real quickly and then briefly go over and just sort of describe how we will solve the problem. There's multitude of ways to solve this problem and the way that I'm solving is definitely not unique, but you could do it a different way that would work just as good. So I'll go through the method that I'm going to do and then we will code that as soon as I finish that. So let's check out how this will work. If you've never heard of Z indexing before, it's a really simple concept and it's something that you probably have seen before and you just don't remember. Literally all it is is say you have like your character and he's running in front of the screen and you have some backgrounds running through the background. And notice what I just did there as I was drawing the background. I sort of took a pause right here and then continued here because we know the backgrounds behind this player. And so that's all Z indexing is. The Z index would say, oh, this Z index is at level negative 10 while the player z index is at like zero and so what this means is the player is more in front of the background and sort of a fake perspective so it's almost giving like a three third dimension to something that doesn't really have dimensions well how do you solve this the method that i'm going to do is the most logical approach where well if we want to solve this what we would do is we would just draw the background first then we would draw the player on top of it because that way anything that the player is occupying will be drawn over whatever is behind it. So that's the basic concept of Z indexing, but how do we solve that? And the method that I'm going to use to solve that is pretty simple too. So what we're going to do is we're going to have some dictionary and this dictionary is just going to have a list of numbers and these numbers are all going to map to a specific array and this array is going to contain the game object. So it's just going to have game objects that are at the appropriate Z indices. And then when we're rendering, what we do is we just render by going uh, from top to bottom. So we go from the lowest Z index to the highest Z index, and then we get the collection of game objects that is stored at that index, and then we draw them. This is not the most efficient solution. There are more efficient solutions, but since we don't have more control over what we can do, how we can draw, we can't really use those. I'm sure that there is probably some library we could use inside of the job library, but I think it's interesting just to try and implement this yourself. And it seems to be fast enough for me. So we'll implement this ourselves and just see how it works and then explore better solutions in some future tutorials. So let's go and code this and see how it works. All right. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add a Z index property to our game objects because currently they do not have any sort of Z indexing properties. So we'll go into our game object and then we will add an a public z index or this is an integer and this is going to be our z index and I'm going to initialize that to zero. I'm also going to add it in as a required parameter here just so that we are forced to fix any objects that do not have a z index already and then we can say this dot z index equals z index which actually just ends up rendering this part useless so we'll just remove that. So that's going to throw a bunch of flags. Let's go through and fix everything that we need to fix. See, we're going to see a bunch of errors because we no longer have that now. So right here for the mouse cursor, I'm going to give that a Z index of 10 because that should always be on top. Um, this is the player. I'm going to give him zero because he should be right in the center of everything. And then this is the ground. So the ground, I'm going to give a Z index of negative one. No, I'm going to give it one because I think it should be in front of the player, if anything, but it should be right on top of the player. So we shouldn't have to worry too much about that. Um, and that looks like it's it for level editor scene. Then we go into level scene and we'll fix all these. So for the ground, once again, I'll give it one for the backgrounds. We will give this negative 10 because we definitely want those to be all the way in the background. Same with these guys. We will put these at negative 10 or actually this is the ground backgrounds. So we'll put these at negative nine because we want them to be in the background, but we want them to be in front of these backgrounds. And that will fix that bug that we saw at the beginning of this episode where we were getting those weird drawing artifacts. And then lastly, the player, which we will give a Z index of zero. And I believe 
that should be it. Okay, and then we'll be notified of any other errors as they come up. This says that we need, okay, and then we'll just give this this.z index whenever we're copying a game object as well. This is in the deserialize method. Do we need to add a z index to the deserialize? I would argue that yes, we do. So let's add in the serialization for the z index. We will add that in right after we do the name. So right down here, we'll say, um, instead of doing name like this, actually, we'll move name up and then we will add z index right after. So let's take name out of here. And then we will say that a comma is true because he is going to have the z index afterwards. And then instead of doing this, we'll say z index. And this is going to be an add int property. And we are going to give it this dot z index. And then we will also change this to z index and change this one to add int property and then give it this dot z index and this is just for our serialization techniques so this is just that we save the data um, and then we can load it back in whenever we're ready so that should take care of that and then when we're deserializing we want to go we will take in the name and then we will take in the uh, we'll say parser dot consume a comma and then we'll say int z index equals parser dot consume int property and then we'll say z index for our deserialization and then we will just pass that in to this game object and that should take care of everything for us so now we have proper serialization in deserialization for all of that now let's go into the render and we can start to actually implement this so like i said instead of having a list of game objects for our render what we're going to do is we're going to have a map and so we're going to have a map from an integer to a list of game objects and then this is just going to be our game objects. So then I'm going to get rid of this one and we will begin to change up some things. So right here, instead of adding a new array list, we will make this a new hash map, which just means that this is a special type of map with constant lookup times that we will have as fast as we can. Um, and it will be constant for sure. We know this because we know that every single key is going to be completely unique. Uh, depending on their collision resolution, everything for their underlying implementation of the hash map, it should be constant. Um, chances are that it's going to be fast enough for what we need. Okay, so then when we're submitting a game object, instead of saying this.gameobjects.add, we're going to say this.gameobjects, we're going to do a couple things. First, we're going to check and see if a game object already exists at this z index. So if there's no game object at that z index, we have to create a new container for all the game objects that would be stored at that z index. So we can say gameobjects.compute if absent which is a really cool function. This is new to Java, I think 11, Java 8 or 11. I don't know what version I'm on. <laughs> and then this basically takes in the key. So the key in this case is the Z index. And it says, and this is the game object dot Z index. And what it says is if that Z index is not present inside of this uh, dictionary, then we will just say K, um, this is a Lambda function. And then we'll just say new array list. And what that will do is it will place a new K, which is just an array list inside the Z index. So basically, if there is no Z index in the dictionary um, for this game object Z index, then we will just put a new array list in that spot in the dictionary. That way we don't have to worry about it. You could do a little if statement, which is what I would have done in the past, but I found this and I thought it was really cool. So we'll use that. Then we're gonna say game objects dot get. So game object dot z index so we get the container at that position and then we'll just say dot add the game object and we will get rid of this line so now we have all of that in place next what we have to do is we have to do a little bit of simple reordering and stuff as we're looping so what we do is we say uh, what's our lowest z index and i'm going to initialize this to integer dot max value that way uh, as we loop through, we can find the smaller values. And then what's our highest Z index? And I'm going to initialize this to our integer dot min value. That way, as we loop through, we can find higher values. So then we'll say for integer i, and we do have to say integer because our dictionary contains integer objects and not ints, which are a little bit less than integer objects. We'll say game objects dot key set. 
And the reason we have to do this too is because uh, dictionaries aren't ordered. So we have to make sure that we are getting these in the proper order. Otherwise, we could have some problems. We'll say if i is less than lowest z index, lowest z index equals i. If i is greater than highest z index, then highest z index equals i. So we're basically just saying, okay, let's find the lowest and the highest inside of our key set and then assign those accordingly. Then we're going to say int um, current current z index equals lowest z index. So we're going to start at the lowest and then we're going to keep going until we reach that highest z index. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say instead of for each game object in the game object, we'll say while uh, game well while z index current z index is less than or equal to the highest z index. So like I said, we're going to loop through until we reach that highest z index. We're going to say if the game objects dot get and then we're going to do the current z index whatever z index we're at right now is null so if there's no container at that point then we will just say z index current z index plus plus and then continue so we'll skip over it so basically um we're going to be looping through every single integer between the lowest and the highest but like we just showed we have like from negative 10 to 10 but there is not an object between every single one of those points so we have this if statement just to check for that. We have um, if there is no container at that z index, we'll just increment the z index and keep going until we find another z index that has some objects at that point. Then after we finish that, we can do our game loop. And so I'm just going to copy this because it's going to be exactly the same. And then we're going to post it into here. I'm going to say cancel on that. Then instead of doing for g and game objects, we'll say for g and game objects, dot get and then uh, current z index because that is the z index we are currently on and then I'm just going to import this real quick that fixes all that up okay and so this should take care of z indexing let's see what happens when we run and we get an error here because we forgot one so this is generated object and if we generate an object what z index we want to take for now we'll just put it at negative one so that it's behind the player okay and then we will go one more time and we get absolutely nothing on our screen so let's see what's happening here okay so we had just a couple of problems um i was doing some debugging inside of our render class and i realized that we were getting stuck in this while loop because we never actually incremented the current z index if it was not uh, if it did exist. So make sure you add this in at the end of that while loop so you don't get stuck in an infinite loop and that should be good. And then also make sure before you run this that you recreate your level because since we changed the serialization and deserialization, we will need to go and rebuild it so that it saves properly because every time we add a new component, um, when it tries to load the level, it won't find that component. But once we do that and we hit play, you'll notice everything looks way better we get no glitches in the bottom here. The background looks firmly in the background. The player is firmly in place in the front because we have the Z index working properly. So this about covers it for Z indexing. It was a little bit of a short video, but that's okay. In the next tutorial, what we're gonna be going over is we're gonna be going over how to do triangle collisions, which is probably the most complex part of this entire series because I use a couple of methods um, to determine to do some pretty complex math. So uh, some of the methods are found in early versions of uh, actual rendering engines and stuff, the stuff they used to render C using CPUs back in the day. So it's pretty cool how I did this, and I think you guys will enjoy it. So if you guys like this, please hit like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next tutorial when we implement the triangle collision. Thanks. See you.